We'll call to order the City of Douglasville's uh, regular meeting for the City Council regular meeting for Monday, March the 20th. We will have our invocation that will be done by Reverend Lasonia Richardson of Love Christian Center. And then our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by our Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Larry Yaki. So we'll ask Pastor Richardson to come forward at this time to do the invocation. She's making her way through the metal detector, Mayor. Um, oh. Ms. Chelsea said there's a long line. Okay. Can someone get her? Or we can have another person do the invocation and have her come at a, another time. Okay, Pastor Richardson. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for volunteering and being available to come and, and present our invocation. So we ask the uh, council members to stand at this time, prepare for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this place and for the occasion for which we come. We pray your blessings on our elected and appointed officials for the city of Douglasville. I ask that you be with them in their decision making as they lead the community to more fruitful and profitable ventures. We thank you for the Citizens Academy class graduating this evening, for those taking an interest and not only wanting to see a better community, but who dare to be a part of making it a better community. We ask your blessings on each household represented here today. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem and Pastor Richardson. We appreciate you coming and offering up our invocation. I ask that someone would please close the door as we still have citizens coming in. They, the door will not lock. They know they can come in, but it's distracting to hear uh, the noise when we're trying to conduct business. We do have announcements and presentations. And uh, before I do that, I will give some protocol and procedures for the meeting so that we're all in one accord. I would ask that you please silence your cell phones and any electronic devices that you may have so that they will not be disruptive during the meeting. Uh, we'll have one person talking at a time for citizens. There is a portion, if what you're here to talk about is not an agenda item that is listed, there is a portion for comments from citizens and delegates, and you are certainly welcome to come to the podium and give your name and address for the record. Please to, uh, fill out a form. There are some green forms that you should have filled out if you would like to talk, and you bring those forms forward and give them to the city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, to my right. And again, you would state your name and address for the record. We ask that you please will not um, refrain from any personal attacks on uh, elected officials or staff you be professional in your opinions. This is a voting meeting, so the things that we'll discuss tonight will have already been discussed, business items, on last Thursday at our work session. Tonight we will vote on those um, issues. The chairperson will bring that issue to the forefront and uh, ask for any new information as it relates to that item. The council members um, will be asked for any questions or comments in addition to the citizens and after that he'll call for the vote or she will call for the vote and the vote will be taken. So we appreciate again your time and we welcome you here to the meeting. Okay, the announcements are the 2017 Dose of Douglasville Citizens Academy graduation. Miss Chelsea Jackson. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Chelsea Jackson, Operations Manager for the City of Douglasville, 6695 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. It is my honor today to present to you the first graduating class of the City's Citizens Academy, Dose of Douglasville. We have 17 participants who either live, work, or own a business, with a few exceptions, um, in the City of Douglasville, and have successfully completed the requirements needed to graduate from Dose of Douglasville. Throughout their time, these citizens have interacted with our several department directors, our city manager, Ms. Marsha Hampton, and our very own mayor, Ms. Rochelle Robinson. They have just participated in several activities in the past eight weeks to include an intro to government. They built their own budget 
for the city of Chelseaville. They picked that, not me. <laughs> they also presented to a mock council who approved the budget to a 4-2 vote, so they were pretty tough on themselves with the budget. They also met with the community development director as well as the Douglas County Economic Development Authority, and they listed that they wanted stores like Chipotle, outlet stores, a Chili's, Whole Foods, and a Sprouts in the city, just to name a few. They talked about crime with the chief and reviewed the 2016 year in report. They also had a mock town hall meeting with our parks and recreation director. They learned exactly what a chamber was and how it benefits the community. They learned about sanitation trucks with Mr. Greg Roberts, as well as how to cover um, a pothole and different types of trucks and recycling and whatnot. And throughout this program, we established four program objectives. And the four program object objectives I would like to share with you today is we wanted to provide an introduction to city leaders and staff to provide information and materials that will enable citizens to understand the departments and how they work. We want to provide citizens with information to enable them to carefully and successfully navigate through that red tape syndrome that most governments have. And we also wanted to create a closer working partnership with the residents um, of Douglasville and its local government. The first session we did um, after they met with our mayor and city manager, um, I asked them one word to describe their local government or their state government or federal government. I gave them a sheet of paper um, and asked them to write it down. And after that, we went over it. So I'd like to share that with you today. And they're laughing behind me because they didn't know I was gonna share this. <laughs> So at first, I said one word. It could just describe Douglasville local government, state government, or federal government, but it's just how you feel. Some of them had a hard time with just putting one word down. I'll just share a few of the words with you. Um, we have slow, confusing, money talks, money, more, more money, slow moving, progress, people, distant, and slow just to name a few. Um, I didn't tell them that they would be doing this exercise eight weeks later after they completed all of their sessions. My whole mind frame in this is to kind of alter their minds and just to see and make sure that they understand how our government works. So last Tuesday, I sat down with them again and I said one word to describe either your local, state, federal government, just how you feel about them. And this is the one word that they created. We have community, representative. We still had complicated, but it's okay. Um, we have empowered, complex, inviting, network, interesting, understandable, excellent, community. We also have another complicated, but Douglasville has very knowledgeable staff and many components looking for good of the citizens. So thank you, Travis. It's very positive. <laughs> so even though I would love to tell you more and how great the Academy was, my perception may be a little unfair because I helped put the Academy together alongside um, other department directors. Um, but I have Mr. Brandon Thompson. Brandon, he was a Citizens Academy participant. He lives and also owns a business in Douglasville. During the mock city council meeting and the budget presentation, Brandon served as mayor of Chelseaville for a few moments. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he'll share that experience with you. Um, so I present you Mr. Brandon Thompson. And he'll share his experience with, um, regarding the Citizens Academy. Hello, Mayor and Council. Um, my experience with this Brandon, was... Brandon, give us your name oh, and address for the record. We'd love to have it. We you. learned that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's got their eyes on me. It's Brandon Thompson, 8327 Office Park Drive in Douglasville. Um, <clears throat> my experience with this was actually pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. I think it was something that Douglasville should implement longer term as a um, business owner and a resident of Douglasville and living in and out of Douglasville and Douglas County uh, my whole life uh, in West Georgia, essentially, 
uh, I found that this was something practical that I needed to learn about my local government and the public officials and what they did and um, essentially how everything conformed together, all the different branches and so on and so forth. And I didn't really have that. Uh, I dropped out of uh, college and I didn't really have a political science background and didn't really understand how everything pulled together. And that was kind of my, my thought process and why I would do this uh, uh, or enroll myself if, if I got um, allowed to be introduced into the program. I, that's, that was my motivation. And honestly, there was a lot of information given um, uh, being a college dropout, uh, not having a lot of major education behind me. I've been self-taught and have, have really just put my hands and my nose to the grindstone to build my business up. And, uh, but I neglected some of that information and, uh, do want to, um, thank, uh, Chelsea, uh, for being a great leader and, and, uh, giving us all of this information and, you know, providing, um, the background and, pulling all the strains together to lead a great uh, class. And at the end of the day, I, I really appreciate uh, the people that put this program together, whether it was Chelsea alone, I don't think so necessarily, but whoever approved this, uh, if it was you guys, thank you. And uh, I, honestly, as a citizen, it gives, me, it, it, it gives me a new respect for the public officials. Um, like I said, all the different entities and how they conform together and run. And as well as it gives me, it inspires me, it, it's definitely educated me, and it's given me hope for Douglasville and its citizens. So I just, again, I wanted to say thanks to everybody and uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. And before I introduce our 2017, the first graduating class of Dose of Douglasville, I wanna give a special thanks to the Douglas County Chamber. Chamber they sponsored um, one session as well as the Douglas County Economic <coughs> Development Authority for sponsoring as well. As well as a special thanks to our very own mayor, our city manager, all of our department directors who participated and their staff who participated in all of the sessions. Um, and immediately, fo immediately following the council meeting, we'll have a reception in ballroom A and B, so you're all invited. Mayor and City Council, the following individuals have completed the requirements of graduation from Dose of Douglasville, a Citizens Academy. They have went through an eight-week program um, to learn about all departments that affect them day to day as well as completed requirements such as watch the mayor's state of the city address and have a discussion as well as a trivia game to learn more about the city of Douglasville. When I say your name, please come down and Ms. Marsha Hampton will give you your certificate. Ms. Trifinia Bailey. Ms. Shannon Belletti. We want you to come in the front, Ms. Trifinia. We're going to take a picture after. Empty stand. Mr. Thomas Dole. Ms. Carol Fleshhood. <laughs> Ms. Janice S. Howell. Mr. Richard E. Howell. Ms. Layla Muhammad. Ms. Allison P. Parker. Ms. Teresa Phillips. Mr. Wayne Phillips. Ms. Lasagna Richardson. Ms. Donna Roper Roach. Ms. Rosa Sanchez. Ms. Darlene Sheardon. Ms. Carla Slade. Ms. 
Mr. David Thigpen and Mr. Brandon Thompson. Let's give a round of applause to our inaugural class for <laughs> Douglasville Citizens Academy. Please stand in your places. The, care, the council will come around. We're going to take a picture for our website and for the newspaper. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Better just to stay back here because it's um, just spread out. Are they going to be able to see us? Can you see us from back here? M Mr. Richard Howell. Oh, Mr. David Thigpen. Did I skip that? Stay back here. Yeah, let us stay. We'll stand back. Stay back here. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to stand back here. That'd be the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little height there. <laughs> I don't know. This works out good. Yeah, we're not going to be able to see them. Y'all yeah, come out front. We're going to have to make two or three rows here, too, because we're going to crunch in real tight. <laughs> Mr. Nichols, pull in right behind. There you go. And... <laughs> We can get the last two on this side to squeeze in a little tighter on this side. There we go. All right, big smile. One, two, three. Thank you so much, Citizen Academy participants. We may have to have a contest next time between the ward, uh, the council members, to see who can have the most participants from their ward. Councilman Siegel just said he had four from Tributary. We're going to have to beat him next time, right? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. We'll move on. We have a presentation by myself. It's a proclamation declaring the month of April. 2017 as Safe Digging Month in the city of Douglasville. And we'll have um, Ms. Michelle Wright will come to accept this Douglas County UCC and Georgia 811 bill. Do you want to say anything first or you want me to read the proclamation? Um, thank you, Mayor and Council, for this and um, for doing that for Safe uh, Georgia 811. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And do we receive some kind of monetary? Um, yes, we do. Um, we've done this every year for the past several years, and the Douglas County Utility Committee receives uh, $250 for this. So. Thank you so much. The proclamation reads, whereas thousands of times each year the underground infrastructure in Georgia is damaged by those who do not have underground lines located prior to digging, resulting in uh, service interruption, environmental damage, and threat to public safety. And in 2005, the Federal Communications Commission designed 811 to provide contracts, contractors, and homeowners a special number of contact utility operators to request the location of underground lines at the intended dig site. And whereas the Douglas Utility Coordinating Committee, a stakeholder-driven organization dedicated to the prevention of damage to underground utilities in Georgia, promotes the National A11811 notification system in an effort to reduce these damages. Damage prevention is a shared responsibility. By using safe digging practices, the contractors and homeowners of Douglasville can save time, money, and help keep our infrastructure safe and connected. And now, therefore, I, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, do hereby proclaim on behalf of the City of Douglasville the month of April 2017 as the City of Douglasville Safe Digging Month and encourage contractors and homeowners throughout the City of Douglasville to always call 811 before digging. Safe digging is no accident. So proclaim this 20th day of March 2017. 811 is hard to say when you're thinking of 911 and 411. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Ms. Michelle. You can come forward and we'll ask the council. We can stand behind the Diaz this time to take the photo. We have to have proof that we've done this.
Oh, the chair's in the way. Ooh. see you. You can't see. We have issues. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. All right. Excellent. Everybody ready? One, two, three. One, two, and three. There you go. Excellent. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Wright. Now we will move on to the agenda items. I open the floor for minutes of the legislative work session on March 2nd, 2017 at the regular meeting and executive session of March 6, 2017. Yes, I'd make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you so much, it's been properly moved and second to accept the minutes as presented. Are there any questions, comments, or um, corrections to the minutes from the council members? Thank you. Not seeing any. All of those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thank you. The minutes are approved. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Open the floor for a motion for the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. Are there any questions or comments from the council members? Thank you, not hearing. Point of oh. procedure, Madam Mayor, are we, are we voting on, sorry, on Granicus? Is this a press the yes, button vote? Yes, if you can. Okay. I don't see my button. You don't see your box? I see a is, request is to speak, your, but I don't see a vote the, button. We're, we're, for the audience, we have a, a new technology, so we're going to a new system, and we're having to put in our voting. So is it working, council members? Yes. I, we I don't have a spot to vote. I have a spot to request. On our to speak. screen, we haven't yet moved to the consent agenda. On my screen, we haven't moved to the consent agenda. Yeah. Now we have. Thank now you. Now you have. What did does it show the vote for the approval of the minutes? Not of mine. Our minutes don't usually reflect the actual vote on min on the approval of the minutes. Thank you for your patience. We're Thank getting you. our new system together. It's like when you get a new phone or something, you have to kind of learn this technology. So are you voting for us? Is that what you're doing? No. Right. Okay, so we have, it's been properly moved and second to accept, to approve the consent agenda. So everyone in favor of approving the consent agenda, you have to push your button. Where? There is no don't have a button. You don't have it. We don't have the button to vote yet. So we're, we're going to go ahead and do verbal, and we'll be prepared for our next Is it showing uh, up? meetings. No, it's not showing up. Showing up now. No. Okay. If you raise your hand. All those in favor, let's raise our hand so that the city clerk can see. To accept the consent agenda, were there any that um, did not want to accept the consent agenda? I didn't hear any additions or corrections. Thank you, it's been unanimously approved to consent, I mean to accept the consent agenda, so we'll move on. The consent agenda is accepted. We'll move on to committees, public safety committee, that's chaired by council member Samuel Davis. No items at this time, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, sir. Community and Economic Development Committee, that's chaired by council member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor, no items tonight. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to Planning and Development Committee. That's also chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Parks and Recreation Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight under Parks and Rec. It's item 23-17-08 authorizes the mayor to sign a contract with Diversified Construction of Georgia, Inc. for construction of the Hunter Park Pavilion Project. I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve item 23-17-08. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second to approve item 23-17-08. Are there any questions or comments from the council members as it relates to this item? Thank you. All of those in favor of approving item 23-17-08, please raise your hand that we're doing. Okay. 
Opposes, raise your hand. Thank you. It's been unanimously approved that item 23-17-08 is adopted. Thank you so much, Councilman Watts. And I would say if Councilman Watts has to leave before the meeting, he is going to the Board of Education to receive a accommodation and an award. He is also a teacher and his school is being um, honored tonight at the Board of Education as Superintendent of Board of Education for Douglas County and he is as well as, as an individual. So he may have to leave the meeting. Okay, Finance Committee, that's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem, Larry Yaki. Yes, Madam Mayor, I don't have any items tonight, but uh, at the end of the meeting, I would like to adjourn into executive session to discuss a legal matter. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, duly noted. Councilman Yaki, thank you so much. Information and Technology Committee, that's chaired by Councilman Richard Siegel. No business tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, sir. Maintenance and Sanitation Committee, that's chaired by Councilman Mike Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor, we have no business tonight under Maintenance and Sanitation. Thank you, sir. Transportation Committee, that is chaired by Dr. LaShawn Burdanley, Councilwoman. No items under transportation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Personnel Organization Committee, that's chaired by Councilman Richard Siegel. No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Ordinance and Intergovernmental Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember Mike Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight. Thank you, sir. Education and Training Committee, that's chaired by Councilman Samuel Davis. No items at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Other business, we open the floor for any other business by council members. Yes, Madam, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yes, Madam Mayor, I, I would like to bring an item under other business. Um, on last Tuesday, March the 14th, the um, Planning and Committee um, Council discussed an item, um, and under this committee, it did not come before the full council. And I serve in the ward with Councilman Sam Davis, and this um, item is in reference to the vote that was voted um, three to two. Um, Councilman Davis and I did not um, vote for this item. However, I, I would like for you, Madam Mayor and Council, I know this is our legislative session where we vote on Monday night. However, I would like for um, all of the council members to listen to the concerns of um, those that are here in the community who would like to just make their comments in reference to the vote that um, now allows um, heavy trucks to drive through Jesse Davis Park. Um, there were discussions about it, and um, I'd like for the community who do have comments to speak on this because this is a park where our children play, our families interact, and um, utilize that park ongoing. I expressed my concerns during the um, planning meeting that I felt that we had other options. There was another alternative that was given, um, and it just appeared that things locked up. So at this time, Madam Mayor um, and Council, I'd like that if um, there are community individuals that are here that would like to speak, I know that the council members will not give any comments, but just listen, but I would like for you, for you all to be able to listen to them at this time. Okay, Councilman uh, Bird Danley, we will certainly um, acquiesce and allow the community to speak um, and this is really unprecedented you typically when we take a vote that is the opportunity for individuals to come forward or have concerns and once the vote is taken the decision is made of course everyone wants the issue to be in their favor and uh, it's majority votes and it was three to two but the majority was three and so I'm not saying that vital concerns on either side, but typically we do not hear issues again once they've been voted on. But, and there was something in our ordinances that says it does not come before the full council once you know, we have an or, uh, entity that has made that decision, um, if it isn't a zoning matter. But we will, of course, right. be happy to hear from the community because we are answerable to the community and transparent in all ways, so. Right. But, for, we, don't, but we don't want to have the habit of continuing to vote over an issue once it's been decided and going back over it again. Right, but we and, certainly do. Right, and, and thank you, Madam Mayor, and I do respect um, the, our current ordinance. However, um, 
like I said, my concern was that this issue and, the, and just as other issues that come before the planning committee for council does not come before the full council. Mm -hmm. and so I, I do thank you yes, for reviewing that. Um, but when there are items such as this that's very critical, I think we um, have an opportunity to listen. So thank you, Madam Mayor, for, for allowing that. You're welcome. And we can look at the, the uh, requirements and the ordinance again to see if we want to revisit having those issues come outside of zoning. If there's something that is pertinent or that's a critical issue, we can make a determination at that time so that we will not break protocol and start a new precedence if that's something that this council's uh, desire and wish to do. Uh, we can uh, certainly look at that and change um, the procedure in which we view cases other than zoning cases. So now the floor is open. We will um, take comments from the citizens. We'd love for, to hear from you as relates to this issue or any other concerns you may have. This is the part of the meeting that um, Council Member LaChambre Denley has had for other business. So you're, you're certainly welcome to come to the podium. Please give your name and address for the record. And you have, what's our time frame? City Clerk, five minutes to uh, state your concern. So please, the floor is open. We welcome you to come, give your name and address, and then we'll hear what you have to say. <coughs> we starting at the top, of, t going right to the cream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the cream, but yes, sir. Uh, to the Honorable Mayor and the Council, uh, I apologize for any information I don't have, and I understand what you just articulated in terms of the issue having already been decided. And I may not have all of the information sufficient to make comments or remarks that will perhaps uh, um, inspire others to take a second look at whatever it is we've done in this regard. But yes, sir, my, please give your attorney Leonard I'm, I'm Danley. I'm sorry, <laughs> Leonard Danley, 6519 Spring Street, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Danley. I, I'm here at the invitation of some citizens after having a conversation regarding a matter that was voted on, I think, sometime a, a day or two ago, where the vote was 3-2, as you've already stated. And the issue for me was that, and if I've got it wrong, I apologize to the council, but my understanding is that it's an issue uh, involving uh, heavy-duty trucks or 18-wheelers and the route that they will be taken as they come out of Paulding County and other areas coming into the city or into I-20. And the question that I understood was whether or not these trucks had an alternate route other than the new route uh, as it goes through Jesse Davis Park. And that's my concern. Jesse Davis Park, as you know, is for our children and uh, it's uh, heavily used, and there are other issues when you have the Hearthong Center there and so forth and so on. Um, if that is the case, I would ask the court, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to your daytime job. <laughs> I would ask the council to reconsider uh, some of the comments that I'm making as well as what some of the other citizens may make in, in regards to that transportation. Now, if there is an alternate route, for the heavy uh, duty trucks, the, specifically the 18 wheelers, or as we call them, transfer trucks. If there is an alternate route, I would ask the council to consider some sign or some direction to those drivers as they come out of Paulding or wherever they are coming from Atlanta going to Paulding to consider an alternate route. And if we don't have an alternate route, then certainly I would understand that, that couldn't, that's not possible. But if it is possible yes. because of the uh, the fact that it is a park, and that's where our children are really involved in a lot of activity, especially in the summer like it is right now. Um, I would ask the, the city council to reconsider its vote on that in that matter, and uh, just for the safety of our children. To me, it was a no-brainer, but I'm sure you all have information that I don't have. But based on the information I have, I certainly would think that you all would take a second look at that and consider the children as they play and, and go throughout their daily activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Danley. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Thank you for permitting us to speak tonight. My name is Tallulah Lisa Martin. A lot of people didn't know my name was Tallulah. Well, I, I live at that. 2150 Washington Drive, Douglasville, 30135. I urge you to reconsider this 18-wheelers going through Jesse Davis Park. 
I am a member of the senior group Bid Whist Club at Jesse Davis Park. I've been there many, many times, particularly during the summer, watching the kids coming from the pool and the basketball court over to the Hawthorne Center and back and forth. I cannot fathom 18 wheelers out there between those two buildings, between Hawthorne and the pool. So I just urge you, please, please reconsider. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martin. You're one of our active adults. You're one of our active adults, not the seniors. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good afternoon, my name is Terenia Carthen. I live at 9432 Woodlawn Drive, Douglasville, Georgia 30135. Um, I have family that lives right there by Jesse Davis Park. I take my daughters up to play basketball at Jesse Davis Park. There have been times where I have been afraid to park on the side where the basketball court is because it's a little crowded. So I couldn't imagine trucks coming down that way for me to get out the car and for kids to cross back and forth through there. My cousins that live there, there's about seven of them and they play there all the time. Like I said, I take my family up there. My aunts live up there. I can't imagine having transfer trucks to come up and through there. Kids a lot of times play by themselves. They don't have adult supervision. Um, I would just implore you to rethink that. As a matter of fact, take a moment to go up there and sit in your cars and watch the kids that go across there, even the adults, because a lot of times they don't even use the sidewalk. They're just out there. So I ask that you reconsider your vote. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and the Council. My name is Alice Jackson. I live at 3361 um, Sutherland Court, Douglasville. I represent our church, Christ Abundant Life, which is located on Cherokee Boulevard, as well as the um, summer camp. I can't imagine trucks, tractor trailer trucks going through Jesse Davis Park Beginning in June, a lot of times in May, but beginning in June, a lot of summer camps use that, uh, use the park uh, for swimming. A lot of the summer camps use the park as for kids to play. But most importantly, it is a community park, and this community deserves to have a safe park for the children to play. Family reunions are held there every year. Uh, not only family reunions, a lot of functions, church functions from various churches. They have functions there every year. I attend um, many functions there. So I just employ the council to really, really reconsider. This is a community, and I think one of the mottos of Douglas County is where we live, play, sleep. And if that's the case, then this is supposed to provide, we're supposed to provide a safe uh, community and a safe haven for our children. That park is utilized a lot. I know that it is not Chapel Hill, but it is a community that really deserves to have a safe park. My name is Marilyn Clark. I live at 8363 Holly Street, Douglasville, Georgia. I'm new at this, I'm retired military, I'm just coming back into the area, so I'm getting you know, acquainted with dealing with on the civilian side of the house. So um, mayor and council, I'm, I'm here for Jesse Davis Park. I was one of those children that grew up in Douglasville. I was one of those children that did sports in Douglasville. And the safety concern that I have when I was a child, the only part, only place we had was Stewart Middle School, the playground at Stewart Middle School. We didn't have a safe, a safe passage just to get to, the, be it the school or the, or the 
partial part that we had when I was growing up. So as far as the recreation and everything, I mean, just that we're talking bringing um, 18 wheelers in between a safe zone, which just the other day on 78 during the construction, as I was passing through the construction, even that being a speed control zone, two 18 wheelers did not do the speed limit coming through that safe zone. And it's my concern that if they do, they do not, excuse me, um, maintain the speed in a, a construction zone, how is it they're gonna maintain a speed in a community park setting where our children are? My concern is the children. My concern are those young athletes that will be tired after a game, that will be crossing the street, not mindful of what they're doing. And my standing up saying, please consider, you know, I had to go through walking through non-safe zones on that side of town, on our side of town. And I'm asking, please consider, read the, your vote because of this area, because of this, because I did have to walk through it. And we did not have sidewalks. Now I see the construction on this side of town. I'm returning home. I'm proud of the construction. I'm proud of everything that's being done. But my concern is not at the safety of our people, not at the safety. Don't, don't, don't let us get hurt because of it. I'm thank you. Um, I'm Terry Harper, uh, representing the uh, Harper family. Um, <clears throat> um, one, one of the things about the park was <clears throat> it's got a lot of history. I know I grew up, <clears throat> I grew up there, um, played. Uh, you know, back in the day, we played. We, pr we pretty much at the park all day. And I have um, a niece that that works there, and we. Um, I know kids going back and forth. I know y'all heard that already, <clears throat> but uh, if kids can't go to the park and it's safe, um, you know, nowadays where can they go? Um, it's, um, you know, I, I got an athletic background. We, um, you know, that's what we do. You know, we, we hit the park all day. And if it's not safe, you know, we got to stay, stay in our homes. Um, you know, <clears throat> just, just kind of reconsider. You know, we, uh, I know it's, it's growing and, and we got a lot of progress going on on that side of town. Um, but we would we would love to have a safe place for the kids to go play. Thanks. Good evening uh, to the honorable mayor and council members. My name is Angeline Smith. I live 8279 Malone Street, Douglasville, 30134-1242. Um, I apologize for not having been here last week uh, to hear the discussion and to participate in um, the vote that you took regarding um, heavy duty trucks passing through Jesse Davis Park. I believe it is not, it will not be a good thing in total once it starts. Um, I feel that who will tell the trucks to slow down or to do this or do this, or do the other thing once it starts. My concern is with policy and I don't know to what extent you will be able to govern policy, but it might be good if no heavy duty trucks pass through any park in Douglas County. I'm thinking when we used to be able to go from Rose Avenue through Hunter Park to Gurley Road, and that was evidently stopped for a reason because it's dangerous when that happens. And I think the same thing should not happen in this case. Also as concerns public and private companies um, passing through public property, I'm not sure that we ought to condone that either. So I do ask you to please reconsider. 
I know it's late, but if you would uh, think about the children and the members of the park. My high school class meets there usually uh, at least once a year for a picnic or whatever. And it would be disconcerting, I think, to have trucks passing through constantly while we're trying to uh, party and have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can I have the rest of her time? <laughs> we'll yield some time to you, Ms. Mitchell. Thank you. Right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Noby Mitchell, 7755 Mountain Creek Way, Douglasville, Georgia. I stand before you this evening on behalf of our children, our teenagers, and our adults that utilize Jesse Davis Park for a variety of activities. The action taken on March 14th during the City Council, during the city council Planning Committee meeting uh, allowing for heavy trucks to go through Jesse Davis Park put these citizens, especially our children, in grave danger. The council members voted uh, to allow these heavy trucks to go through Jesse Davis Park, either I'm sure have children or nieces or nephews. My belief is that you love your children and you could not fathom the idea that your kids would be put in such a position with these heavy trucks. The playground on one side of the street and the gym on the other side of the street. Very often, these kids go from one side to the other in a very short period of time. It appears by this decision, there was a disregard for our children. Your kids' lives matter. Our kids' lives matter. I spoke with a lot of people around the city who grew up utilizing the park and still enjoy activities such as family reunions, baby shower, parties, meetings, football, playground, the basketball courts inside Alice Hawthorne and outside. What are you saying to these people who use Jesse Davis Park for a variety of reasons, such as the Campbell family, the Clark family, the Ellison family, the Banks family, the Orner family, the Jones family, the Cobb family, the Williams family, the House family, the Springer family, the Danley family, the Sparks family, the Bowen family, the Smith family, the Davis family. What are you saying to these families and many more? Are you saying that you don't care when activities are going on and the children go back and forth to the playground because every time we have a family reunion, I hear kids, I want to go to the playground, I want to go, and they just dot, just go, okay? And let's look at what happened, as she indicated, with regards to Hunter Park. Uh, there were people walking through, driving through, and obviously the neighbors or the community no longer wanted them coming through. That access was moved. So therefore, the people who walked to Hunter Park sometimes, like myself, had an additional mile to go. So therefore, we just quit going. Uh, they just stopped walking through the park. And so therefore, I believe, although you were not councilmen during that time, I believe that if you were, you would have, without hesitation, voted to close that entrance, yielding to that neighborhood, yielding to those neighbors. The members of the families that utilized Jesse Davis Park were saddened, disappointed, outraged, and wondered, after all these years, how far have we really gotten in Douglas County when we uh, don't appear to care about only our own? It appears that we're, we were moving in a good direction. However, in many eyes of the citizens, uh, by this action, uh, that may be a setback, seeing how there's also a volatile relationship with the government anyway. I know there's some outrage with the two councilmen that live on the north side. I just wonder with the mayor and council, are there any other outrage with anybody? For the blatant disregard for our community, our children, and our way of life. From the book of Amos 524, and later quoted by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., let justice roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let justice, for those that cannot speak for themselves, our children, 
run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. We're asking that the mayor and council recant the votes that allowed these oversized trucks uh, be, to be rerouted and not allow access through our Jesse Davis Park. As I'm sh sure some of you are familiar with, it ain't over, okay, until, <laughs> okay, and I know Mr. Watts is gone, but I wonder how he would feel if that was the children out of his school going back and forth. So I hope that he see this film and consider uh, talking with the council members. And uh, since that board is un unanswerable to the community, when there's a issue with that committee that's going to affect us, it needs to be answerable to us. Thank you. That's me. <laughs> okay, we, we need to have order in the council chambers, please. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brandon Penniman. Um, to the mayor, of course, and to our city council. Thank you guys, first off, for being here. Um, I'm coming to you guys as a concerned citizen, um, a lifelong citizen of Douglas County, and I was explaining the situation to some of the guys in my mentoring program. I run a mentoring program here in Douglas County, and I was explaining the situation to some of them and um, telling them uh, where the park was and that it was the park for the Tiger Cubs, and they actually had some things that they wanted to say to you guys, so I was going to let them speak to you first, and then I'll speak. So this first young man, his name is Jonathan Richards. Um, I think my friend Jaden, Troy, Hudson, and Tremaine, they all play for the Tiger Cubs, and they have to go back and forth across Jesse Davis Park. And I just want to make sure they, they're safe and they make it an immense club so I can lead them. Brothers of mine that go to the same mentoring program named the Men's Club that I go to. They play at there at for a team called the Tiger Cubs, and I just want them to be safe. And like the Bible says, it says, "Peace be still." So I really don't think that that there could be peace with huge trucks just going through everywhere. Okay, so um, this is not scripted. They just talk, I was just talking to them back there, and they said they wanted to say something. Um, and shout out to you guys, because I know it was pretty tough for them to get in front of you guys. But we, are, we as citizens are coming here because we, we're serious about this issue. I, like I said, I'm a lifetime citizen of Douglas County, and I actually played football for the Tiger Cubs myself. And at a time, the Tiger Cubs played over at Hunter Park. And then the entire football program was moved to Jesse Davis. And ever since it's been moved to Jesse Davis, there's definitely has been inadequate parking. Um, for all the fans and the parents that are coming, there's only one strip of parking that's right by the park, right by the grass where these trucks will be going through. And then they have to use supplemental parking at the top of the hill where the basketball is going on and then over towards the apartment complexes. So there's already inadequate parking. So if you're going to take trucks through that area, you're going to ha probably have to remove some of the parking that we don't have already. And then that area, um, the street's very small, so I'm sure it's not able to handle all that weight. These are concrete. This is a concrete company that's trying to go here. Um, so we just want to consider that. Also, another thing we want to consider is that, um, is there an, an alternate route? Is there an alternate route for them to be able to get to the park? Um, if they can't, if there, is, is there another way for them to get through the park without actually having to go through one of the main streets where the kids are crossing all the time? Um, like I said, my name is Brandon Penniman and I'm a lifelong citizen and I'm just concerned. So that's why I'm here and take time out of my day to be here. So thank you guys, and one thing I want to suggest is that maybe you all could bring it back to the entire council to be voted on. Um, I know it's voted on by just the Planning and Zoning Committee, so I was hoping that maybe it could be brought to the entire council so the entire council could vote on um, this, the, this um, issue. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and also, I'm sorry, thank you, Kanye. May 21st, we're doing our Community Trailblazer Award. My organization is honor people in the community. I would love for you guys to be there. We're actually honoring Officer Jackson, who's the student resource officer here in the county. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Penniman. Men's Club.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, on behalf of um, the, city, the people of Douglasville and the city of Douglasville, um, I What's think- your name, Mr. Jones? Uh, I'm sorry, my name is Charles Jones. Address is 7764 Melanie Drive, Douglasville, Georgia 30134. Apologize for interrupting you. That's no problem. Okay. I would really like for you guys to reconsider um, having these big trucks coming through Jason Davis Park. You guys know the Douglasville Tiger Cubs practice there. Practice starts at 6.30. People start getting to practice at 5, um, 5 o'clock. And with these big trucks coming through, unless we're planning on spending money to, to, to widen these streets, to, um, to uh, accommodate these trucks, but where we wouldn't spend money to accommodate parking at the park, I don't, I don't see how that mix. That's oil and water. But you'll do something for a company, but you won't do something for the kids of the community. So, okay, we, um, I said before, I apologize, before the meeting started that we wouldn't have any interruptions. I know we're all passionate, but if we continue uh, to have interruptions and not let people finish their conversations, we're gonna have to have the chief escort you out. So please refrain, refrain from uh, being disruptive. You guys know exactly how many kids that goes to that park. And for the people, the three people that voted yes, they know how many kids at that park. But I guarantee you, if that was at Hunter Park or any other park, it would have been a no because you don't care nothing about our kids. Our kids have to go from the football field to the gym. Unless it's something that we don't know about of what's gonna happen in this, then you know we need to know. But right now, we're on the outside looking in, and right now it don't look good because you, you guys know it's anywhere from 150 to 200, 300 kids over there doing football season. Doing the, I grew up at Jesse Davis Park. So I know how people like to run from the outdoor uh, basketball courts over to the gym. And if you're gonna try to make that a three lane or a four lane for these big trucks or widen it, that's gonna be, it's gonna take a kid a whole lot longer to get across that street to dodge that big truck. We really need to reconsider and use the alternate route off of the new six lane highway. It's not about the money, guys. It's about the safety of our kids. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there any other persons that would like to come forward? I'm Aisha Good. Um, I'm here to talk as, to you as well about Jesse Davis Park. So even though I am not a direct resident of the area, I do frequent the area often. So I just want to say that I think as legislators, we have to be more thoughtful, and I'm not one, <laughs> by the way, but you should be, just be more thoughtful about your approach to passing legislation. Jesse Davis Park, as many as you know, the roads are very tight. Events that we have in that area, I mean, you have to search for parking. So it, it, it was interesting to me to hear that this legislation was passed. Um, but if you look over just over time, I've been a resident of Douglas County since 2004, and there has not been any immediate attention to that area for a long time. Um, so, to, so I'm trying to figure out why would resources be directed to expanding roads to allow big trucks to come through that area instead of using those resources to do something else different for that community. So I think it's just key that as legislators, you're more thoughtful in your approach uh, because children are our future, um, our communities, our families are our future, and I just ask you to please recant um, your vote. Please bring it back to the table and let's discuss it as a community of ways that we can just do a better approach. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the money may have looked good at the time, but you have to think about the future of our, of our communities. So please recant your votes. Thank you. Okay. Any other? 
Yes, sir. Uh, hello, Council and uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm also am not a resident of Douglasville, but I have I'm frequent in Douglasville, and I understand that usually you always hear that children are our future. You also hear that everything that we try to do, we try to do for our children. So this action does not sound to me like we did it for our children. If we did it to make money, then we need to reconsider it. If we did just to do some widening of some streets or whatever it is, we need to take into account our children first. And one thing I want to read to you guys is something that was actually put onto your own site. And it's from the Douglasville Parks and Recreation Program Guide, which is actually put in there by the city of Douglasville. The mission of the city of Douglasville Parks and Recreation Department is to enhance the interaction of people and the environment in, in a manner in which is pleasing to all. This does not sound like it's pleasing to all. It does not sound like it's pleasing to our kids in the community. And the two council members that voted no are the two that actually represent the people that live in that area. So if they voted no, the rest of you should have voted no. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. The floor is still open if there are any other comments. If not, we really appreciate all of your um, attention and your passion and your heartfelt comments. We are taking those into consideration. I would say, um, as we make this decision, I just wanted to not to just put some information out there for clarity. We would not have to recant our vote because the city council did not vote for this action. This was part of the planning and development committee. Um, and of course, 11, $111 million is going into the new expansion of the highway. Lots of money has been spent in Jesse Davis Park as other parks as well. And we are concerned about all the citizens in Douglasville, all the citizens who live in Douglasville, not just one portion. Um, this is renovations that will um, help to expand Jesse Davis Park and make it a better park. This was um, a measure that was requested by GDOT for Highway 92. There is an alternative route that we will look at as well. And um, the trucks, there was a schedule for the trucks. So the, the council members or the planning and development committee did not frivolously make this decision. There was a, um, a schedule that said the trucks would be there early in the morning and late at night. They will not um, have transportation going on during regular hours, um, 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I'm not certain of the hours, um, but they said they were not early. They were early in the morning and late at night that the trucks would be uh, in transit. So they would not uh, impede or be endangering any children that were, would be there or families at playtime. Um, so I don't know if there was, uh, I know Councilman uh, Yaki was on the planning commission if he wanted to give any clarifying um, information that we would consider as we take this measure that was, and again, when there is a decision made at the planning and development committee, unless it is a zoning board decision, the council's ordinance says that it does not come before the full council. But again, as I said, at the start of this citizens portion, if that's something that we need to revisit, and uh, if it's something urgent or something critical that one of the council members believe, as uh, Council Member Burdanley did, that we would bring it back to the council, we can put that in as a measure and hear those issues. But as it currently stands, it's only a zoning issue that comes before the full council uh, with planning and development committee, so. Um, this particular meeting is um, um, Mr. Adams, his, his, you know, he's over planning and development and so, um, Mark, do you have any comments to this? Thank you, Mr. Yaki. I, I had not anticipated that we would have discussion on the item tonight. Normally, during the time for comments for citizens and delegates, we do not. But I have listened tonight and have recorded 12 different sets of comments by various individuals, and I appreciate you coming forward and, and making those comments, and I appreciate you being here and concerned for your children. Uh, I will not make any comments as to reply to the comments that were made. Uh, we can take that under consideration, each and every one of those items that you have mentioned. However, there is one major difference when you compare our park system in Hunter Park, which was mentioned several times, to 
Jesse Davis Park, there is a difference. Malone Street, unfortunately, is a public street. Malone Street does not end where the city's property begins. It extends past the city's property, past the Hawthorne building on the left, past the football parking area on the right. And it is not an abandoned street. It is an open public right of way. Therefore, those people, those owners that own property on Malone Street in that area have the same rights to access their property from that street as any of us do to access our properties where we reside. That property in question that we have taken action on was properly zoned for the use intended by the city of Douglasville. We did nothing to change the zoning to allow that property owner to come there in this meeting uh, two weeks ago. We simply had to take action on the application that was presented to us and we did table the item for two weeks in order to gather all of our information from a legal standpoint as to what the city's rights were. So there has been a little bit of misnomer, a little bit of misinformation supplied, uh, a little bit of hearsay that's come about from the conversations that I have heard and the comments I've heard made tonight. And that's all that I'll say at this moment. But as the mayor has said, we will take this under consideration. But this was not, I will say this, this was not something that was hidden from anyone. It was not something that was ever intended to be required to come before the city council. It was not a rezoning issue that you were not told about. It was simply an applicant coming forward with their property, their plans, and their design. And it was brought to that planning and development committee, which is not comprised of the entire council. Therefore, it was not to be brought before the city, the full city council. I want to make certain that everyone knows that. There is nothing that we on this development committee, planning and development committee have done, trying to skirt our responsibility to our entire community, nor trying to keep anyone, anything from the citizens that live in that immediate area. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman of Planning and Development Committee. I appreciate uh, you allowing me. I was just implored tonight to say because I didn't want the citizens, I know typically we don't talk about the issues until it is in committee, but I did not want the citizens to think that we didn't care and we didn't hear what they were saying. And just to put some of that information out there that um, we, did, we did care, we, we heard them and we'll make considerations on and, and move. Yes, sir, Councilman. Uh, Madam Mayor, I was also at, the, at that meeting and uh, I mean, I know some of y'all who, I mean, I know you well, my, my stepson played football over at Jesse Davis. so. I understand the issues. We looked and, and double checked. This this zoning was done back years before, um, and I absolutely agree with everything the chairman said. We thought about this and was pensive about it. And I see some of y'all shaking your head, but this sometimes there's hard decisions here. The decision was not ours to make. The decision had already been made. Um, I care about all the folks in the city. Somebody mentioned somebody about being from the north side. I don't care. We had an issue that we had to handle, um, and that was about the development and how the development of the property was being done. It wasn't the zoning. If it was a zoning that we could have had and that we could have effectuated, I think we'd be all be on the same page. But I ask our staff: Is there any way? we can change this. Is there any defense that we have to deny these folks who have purchased this property? And, and there wasn't. So please don't think that we made this decision arbitrarily. There wasn't much that we could do because of the existing zoning that was there. So I'm, I'm sorry that some of y'all are upset with the decision that I have made. But I believed it was the uh, the only decision that we could make legally for for the city. 
Okay, any other council members wanting to respond? Yes, uh, I'd like to make, get some clarification here also. This is a recycling company, okay, that is going to have empty trucks that the, the recycling product does not come back to this particular site. Only the truck and the container. They're only gonna have two to three trucks total. And those trucks are going to leave in the morning and come back late afternoon. One or two trucks. What they do is they go to different sites throughout the city or the county and pick up concrete. The concrete is then taken to another plant where it's recycled and then it comes back empty. That's one of the things that's gonna happen and that's how, that's how that process is gonna work. So the trucks leave in the morning and come back at night. And like I say, it's gonna be one, two, he says the maximum they're gonna have is three trucks. The other part, the widening of the road. The DOT is going to widen the road all the way up to the, I believe, to the uh, end of the, our, our street as it stands right now, past Hawthorne Center. The street's gonna be widened, okay, to accommodate a real street. It's not a real street right now, but it is. It's a city street. And then the trucking company is gonna continue that for another, I believe, 700 feet or something to that effect. So the street's gonna be wider than it is right now. So it's gonna accommodate the trucks and the parking. And the par and the parking. That's also there. And we are going to do everything possible to keep the trucks only going five to 10 miles an hour, whether it's speed humps, okay, or anything. It's not any different if a car or a truck came up that road and wanted to turn around and come back out of there. An 18-wheeler can do that. There's no sign saying it can't. So that is, and I can say, I sit on the same committee and we had no alternative. But that's some clarification that you all needed to know. No answers and questions, please. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to say thank you, Madam Mayor Robinson, because typically on a night that we vote, there is no discussion. So I want to commend you, Madam Robinson, for allowing that to happen. That is, that is something that typically has not happened. Well, I also want to say that to um, Chairman Mark Adams, is that um, Councilman Adams and I, we have dialogue all the time. We may not always agree, but he knows that after we've talked about stuff, the great thing about our relationship is that we can still discuss. And also to um, Councilman Miller, the same as well. I do wanna say that there was not an attorney um, present during the time that we had our meeting, and that's why we had some questions, and I, in my opinion, that we couldn't answer. I do honestly believe that no one on this council, mayor and council, would put our children at risk. However, things don't change sometimes when we don't discuss it and think it through the process through A, B, or C. So it is not traditional to do things this way, but everything is not traditional when it comes to our children. So I just wanna say thank you for the clarity. Thank you for the clarification and your comments, but Madam Mayor again, thank you for allowing the, the, our citizens to be able to speak and be heard. Yes, so and I would like to, to ask that, I know that Councilman uh, Mayor Pro Tem Yaki have um, asked that we resign and go, that we resign and go into our um, executive session, so I wanted to ask the attorney that during the time of our executive session, I know it's under finance, can there be questions asked in regards to this issue in the executive session? No, ma'am, this is not property acquisition or a uh, pending or, or threatened lawsuit. Okay, then I have, I'd like to um, discuss at some point um, some concerns that I have in regards to, an em to employees' um, issues in executive session in regards to this, this um, issue. For employees, for personnel, we can uh, bring it to the Planning and Community Development Committee uh, meeting committee for uh, Council Member, okay. the Chair, Councilman Mark Adams, mm -hmm. and at that time, you know, we'll to revisit to see if we want to discuss it in full council, as which has been your request, and at that time, we can um, 
see other avenues or options as far as alternative <laughs> routes and what we can do. Right. Okay. So, so we'll I'm, bring it under the committee for uh, planning and development. Right. And I'd like to, to know what date can we look at that, um, Madam Mayor? We'll have to be their city manager just to have the docket of we have availability. I know our, our uh, agendas are already spelled out, but we can certainly add it to the list if we. I'm sorry, I just to clarification, uh, Ms. Daling, you're asking about a personnel matter? Was that well, what you were asking? Right, but also our uh, Madam Mayor stated that under planning and zoning, it, have to, it would have to come back before council and we can look at a date of when can we um, revisit it. So um, my question is, when would that be? One second. For the personnel issue, we can discuss in executive session. I'm not certain of what the personnel issue would be, but we can. Thank you, Mayor. You can do that. Yes, ma'am. We City can uh, do it as soon as the 30th at 5 o'clock. All right. And, and we're speaking of March the 30th, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Any other comments or is there any other business to come before the council as it relates to council members? Do you have any, anyone else want to bring up any other business? Thank you so much uh, for your patience. We'll move on with the agenda items. The next agenda item is the City Attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business. Thank you so much, sir. Chief Assistant City Attorney, Ms. Susan Littlefield. Yes, ma'am, when we uh, um, have a motion for executive session, could we also discuss property acquisition as well as litigation? Yes, ma'am, property ac acquisition as well as a finance issue. Is that yours? Legal. Legal. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, that would be your motion. Yes, sir, thank you. Reports from the Chief of Police, Chief Gary Sparks. Uh, no item, Madam Mayor. Thank you, looking sharp over there, Chief. Um, our City Manager, Ms. Marsha Hampton. Um, yes, ma'am, just wanna say thank you for your patience as we work through the electronic system. So if you saw the counter and the timer does work, thank you, Ms. Mitchell, for testing that for us. Um, and if you would, before, um, when the motion is made to uh, adjourn, we would like to see if we can record that to see if the voting does work to test that item. So if you're patient with us, and the reason it takes a little bit longer, and for those in the audience, the clerk has to do about five steps when previously she had to do one. So it takes a little bit of time, so when you all are uh, making your motion, so that's why we're asking you to, to raise your hand so we can make certain that we get it accounted correctly. But um, with that, um, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Now there is another opportunity since we did, uh, did something in, that is typically not done, we had under other business citizens and uh, delegates comment. Now there is an opportunity again for comments from citizens and delegates, but we will not revisit the issue about the road in Jesse Davis Park. We've exhausted that. We're happy to hear those comments, but uh, we don't want to open that floor up because this was not a time for rebuttal. We were just uh, receiving information and, and giving information for clarity. So the floor is open for any citizens to, uh, or citizen delegates to give comments. You're welcome to come at this time. Thank you. Not seeing any, any staff reports? No ma'am. Okay. We have, before we adjourn, we have. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn it to executive session to discuss a legal matter and a property acquisition. We have a motion. Is Second. There? Thank you, it's been prop. Oh, uh, Paul, I know you're doing the technology. There's my motion. See the motion, is the second recorded? Me. Councilman Siegel. We're gonna raise our hands. I'm motion. gonna call it. We're gonna raise our hands. <laughs> no, no yes. we do now. Just yes. popped up. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. No. Vote yes. to go into executive right. session. Not all of us. No, we can't see. Davis if it's does on not there or have not. the voting option. You may need to. You <laughs> vote. To adjourn into executive session to discuss property acquisition and legal matter. Has everyone voted? 
Okay, unanimous. We are adjourned into executive session. <laughs>